Hey, I'm back at the quilt market. I'm in Demo Alley. I'm going to be finishing up now. I'm not going to finish the line today. Obviously, this is an hour demo. I have a lot of people that are stopping these questions and I'm talking to you, so it's a little bit slower, but I wanted to let you know how the technique was and hopefully you understand the technique. The technique is this, follow your intuition. <laughs> that might be a little bit vague, but it really is an intuitive process. So look at this. I have all these gorgeous fabrics here. This is from my own fabric line. This is the Calico Horse fabric line. Running horses. This is a free-flowing mane and tail. That's what I was going for. This is my succulents. Look at these succulents. Little horse head and little foal. My barrel cactus. The barrel cactus has a little road runner hidden in it right here. Great big repeat on this. So what I'm doing today, here's my Calico Mountains. That's from the Calico Horses. They were named after the Calico Mountains in Nevada. Here's some running horses from overhead. It's a herd of horses looking down. They did that in two colorways. And the, what I love, probably one of my favorite fabrics is the magenta. So I have this in two colorways. Look at the size difference. I've given you large, and smaller. So with this demo, as I'm doing this, I'm looking for direction. I'm creating the anatomy of the animal. So what I want to do is I want to pick fabrics that will just accentuate the lines and the anatomy of this lion. Here's the lion. See these lines? I want the fabrics to tell the story. This is the Prince of Charm. It's a little lion, I mean. Prince of Charm. So, I've used lights for the highlights. Sort of a medium, my, my flowing is a medium. It, it has hair, it looks like hair. It's, it's, it's working for me. I just use these pop, these magentas and pinks because I want some color. But look how I picked the arch of the neck. You see that? That tells me that the animal is moving that illustration. Look at the lupin. See the lupin? Thanks you, Kathy. That lupin gives that broad section of the lion. See how he's, I'm trying to get that hairline. I follow the direction of the fur, feathers, hair. That's how I work. That's how I create everything. Kathy wants to know, uh, when will your fabric line be available? My fabric line ships into stores in May. So you can look for your stores. If you don't have this, if you don't think that your store has them or won't have them, you need to urge them to order Calico Horses Free Spirit from Free Spirit. That's my new line. And I will also have them available for pre-orders for retailers and people like that don't have own shops, right? If you can't, you live out in the sticks and you can't get them, just go to my website, calicohorses.com. And my, work, my web designer is working on it right now. So this week, that link will be up. And you'll pre-order it and that'll be shipping in May. She also wants to know what weight tearaway stabilizers do you recommend? I'm using a, I'll pop it in the comments because I don't have it memorized, but I do, I do use um, a heavyweight, it's, it's a heavyweight, I think it's by boys, I forget the name of the people that does it, but that's a heavyweight. Hi. Hi. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So now I'm trying to build these cheek muscles, I'm coming around here, I'm looking at the photograph. The photograph has some light fur here. So if I wanted to really put light fur here, it may not be contrast enough with the background. I need to have the lion pop. So even though the photograph is light, I need to get these photos. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna pick this green. This is Desert Sage. It matches my loop and fabric. So there you go, that's that. So what I do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm going in this area down here. So I just put that template over top of it, put this here, and now I'm gonna pop that area in. Let's see what I got going here. I got that done. I wanna get down here. Yeah, so I'm gonna put this here. So I take this here. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not looking for perfect shapes. When I cut my fabric, I don't want hard edges. I curve them. The reason I curve them is that when I'm stitching, I don't want any corners flapping up. 
so all of my shapes are organic. It's like a kid. This one looks like a kidney. Get my scissors. And I will be pinning these into place. Now, when you do this, you can cover and layer over top of the fabrics that you already have. But for the most part, when I do my layering, I don't layer them too much because I don't want a lot of thick fabrics. I'm not building this to be um, something that's going to build up in layers. So by using that, now I can get and build that. I'm building the cheek muscles here. See that? Goes back here. See how it goes? See the white? I already have this white area that I have right here. I will probably use lace up here. So if I wanted to cut it off, I could just go like this, freehanding it. I'm not crazy, people. I don't get too nuts about it. I'm not, I personally am not a naturalist. A naturalist is when you draw every feather of the bird. You have to have every single piece of wrinkle. For, I don't do that. There's a lot of artists that are dynamite. I mean, Sophie Standing is a master at this. I don't do it like Sophie does it because I'm not that, I'm not a natural. She is a master. She does this. I'm just trying to, I'm an impressionistic artist. I'm doing impressionism. That's what I do. So this is an impressionist view. Danny Amazeus does beautiful, beautiful work. I think he's very abstract, but I think that he is very, very much a realist artist. It's gorgeous, gorgeous work. Susan Carlson does a lot of realism. There's a lot of fabric artists. You know, it's not just me doing this. I'm just having fun. I'm just trying to teach you to have fun to do this. We don't all have to be, you know, blue ribbon winners. And in fact, I don't enter my stuff in any contest. I'm here to help animals. I'm just here to have fun and work with you. So let's get going here. I'm gonna take it back over here and sew. Some of you that haven't seen the sewing portion. Dean's gonna follow me over the sewing machine. Again, my pins are all going up in the same direction. It's a meandering stitch. Ooh, hang on, my lion fell. I don't wanna step on my finished product. Okay, so I'm going to just come up to the top where the pins are facing on the same direction and I'm just going to do a little meandering stitch. And I'm covering, look, I'm coming over the edges. See the edges here? I'm just going back and forth to lay down those edges. Done. Cut my threads and now I'm ready to move on. Now let's just pretend I was all finished. Let's just pretend I was all finished getting this applique. What's the next step? So the next step is taking my template that I've already cut out the back. I've already cut out all the important parts of the anatomy of the lion. That's very important. I wanna see those muscle tones. So I'm gonna lay this over top. So you can see how I'm matching it up. Lay it all down. I take my pen and I start to draw in every little line to put these little areas back in. All these lines get put in. Everything, I trace all of them. Now don't forget when you're working with a Frixion pen, when you hit it with an iron, the lines disappear. So for the most part, when I'm gonna be working on the ear or the eyes, I'll just mark this section and then I'll take my brights. These are my new threads my new thread collection from Aurifil and I will choose these bright colors and I will work and stitch in the direction of the anatomy. I've got the lines on and I'm going to be following the fur. How do I know what the fur looks like? I look at my photograph and I follow the fur line. So when I'm stitching I've got these lines drawn and if you look closely, Dean can you get in there? The fur goes like this. So when I stitch, it's not a zigzag stitch. I'm stitching in this direction back and forth and I'm blending the fabric. So if this is blue, let's come back over here. So if we have this blue color, I'm gonna need to put that blue color here. So I'm gonna demonstrate that. We have time for me to do a demo of that, Dean? Quickly. Quickly? I have to thread the machine and everything. All right, so just We've pretend. We've got time. We do? Okay. Sure. 
You should sing in the meantime to keep everyone on. <laughs> I'm not singing. They're just going to have to do Now, hang on, everybody. I'm trying to get this thing open. I'm going to move the camera over to the Does finish Does anybody piece. have any questions? Oh, here's something, everybody. When you take the threads out... Okay, you're just going to stare in the thing? Okay, never mind. Show us. Never mind. I'm just threading my machine. When you do this work, I don't change the bobbins a lot. If I'm working with a dark color, I use the dark on the bobbin. If I'm working in a medium, I mean medium. I don't want red popping through on my light colored, you know, white fabric. I don't want bright yellow clicking up on my dark navy. So just be, just be uh, aware that you need a lot of bobbins when you're doing this work, but you don't have to keep changing the bobbin on every thread. Okay, so I'm going to put this, I'm going to thread my machine. And I think we're coming to the end of Demo Alley actually here, people, so I might have to I can, wrap I can it up. This. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Am I too late for a demo? No, I'm just showing you how to do the thread painting right now. Oh, there. okay. So, threading my machine. them down with a meandering stitch no glue no fusing so I used my template my photograph and I cut out my shapes just using this laid it down and I cut out all these elements and now I'm gonna thread paint them I've got it all tacked down Look, it's not going anywhere and now how do I thread paint well the what I like to do because I like to find out where's the anatomy, where's the fur going, how am I doing this? I've marked these areas to tell yeah. myself that the thread goes this way. And I know it goes this way because I'm looking at the fur of the lion. That's how I know it. So I mark it and I go. So now I've got my teal color because I'm working on this and I'm going to thread paint and I'm doing it like fur. So it's not a zigzag stitch. It's a long stitch because I'm making fur. Now, right now, if you look at this, this blue butts up against this green. I've got to take the blue, not on the blue. We already know that it's blue. I've got to take the blue and blend it into the green. I'm just going to start a little bit. I'm going to remove that thread. So you're not back tacking or anything? What is back tacking? Uh. Two Make stitches forwards, two, two stitches back. Locking. Yeah, this is, okay, so you're talking like a quilter. <laughs> this is art quilting, and art quilting is, this is a raw edge applique. Right, There's right. no turned under. Okay. So what am I doing? I'm taking my stitching, and I'm making fur. And I'm going in the direction of the line. Now, it's a happy medium here. I don't want this red to cover all the fabric. I'm just trying to pack down the edges. Now what I do is I get my green. This green has to go into the blue. They give it like painting. This, you know, mm -hmm. we, we call it thread painting, but it really is blending the colors. And you have to do that. You have to go the blue into the green and the green into the blue. This is how you do you use Oracle threads? Oh yeah. Okay, so you know to pop off the flange. Oh, yeah. You're a shop owner? Yes. Very good. Where are you where's your shop? In Plano, Texas, it's oh, a okay. suburb of Dallas. Wonderful! I'm teaching one, two, two workshops in Austin, Texas, next April. Ugh. Maybe you'd like to come and do one for me. Then I afterwards. do them everywhere. I'm going to Australia, Italy, Ireland. That would be awesome. If you would do like you have to have a card, have I, I do have a card. It's in my lookbook. Contact me. It has all oh, my contact info. That's, your book. That's my book. Awesome. Michelle Sangler wants to know, do you normally use muslin as your base fabric? No. No, I don't. What do you use? 
This denim. Okay. Yeah, this denim. So now I'm ready, ready to take the blue, the green fur. Green, everybody, this line is green fur. And I start up here, and I come down into here. So now I'm painting. I'm taking that beautiful green and I'm making fur. But I've got to tack these edges down because it's raw applique. I have to go into the blue because I'm blending. So, turn it around here. That's what we're doing. Let me get my final over here. So can you see that on this particular piece, I used the green to go in the lavender, the lavender to the green here, because my fabric is green and blue, I chose the green thread into the blue and then the blue thread into the green. I've got a lot of work to do on this. This is a very, very step as you go process. This is how I did this one. We'll talk again about this before we go, because if we're gonna be signing off, on Deb New Alley is closing up here. You can see everything I just told you about. This is how I do it. When I cut out, this is a little butterfly, I interrupt. So as I'm doing that thread painting, I get to the butterfly, what do I do? I use every single shade that's in that butterfly, I stitch it, and then I take, if this was a white background around the butterfly, that white gets stitched into the green, the green gets stitched to the white, and I blend it. Mm -hmm. That's how I do it. Is there any more questions? You have any more questions, anybody out there? Okay, I'm going to say goodbye. This has been a great demo alley, a great experience for me. I'm the new fabric designer for Free Spirit Fabrics. I have my own Aurifil thread collection that matches my fabrics. I did calico horses. I you know which ones. Yes, I ordered some of them. Did you? Yes. See that, everybody? People love me. Yes, <laughs> we love you. And here's my barrel cactus. All made up. Beautiful. Fabric is, the fabrics are getting a great response here in Houston. I am blessed. I'm thrilled to be here. So thank you, everybody. I'll see you soon. Bye.